The ChurchTechCast.com screencast show is sponsored in part by viewers like you. Head over to Patreon.com slash Paul Allen Cliff, and for as little as a dollar a month, you can support the show. That's Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. Your support is greatly appreciated. Hi everyone and welcome again to another, well, actually this is the first episode of the live streaming version of the churchtechcast.com screencast show. So my idea for this show is that since I was getting a lot more engagement on YouTube from screencasts that I'd in fact start doing them more regularly instead of just whenever the whim hit me. So. That's, in fact, what I'm planning on doing right now. So, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to join the conversation. Uh, head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact, or drop me a line on Twitter, Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F, is another good way to get in touch with me. Um, if you go to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash contact, you'll find my email address, which, strangely enough, is paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com, or you can just leave a comment there. That's a perfectly fine place to do it. You can leave a comment below this video, whether you're on trinitydigitalmedia.com or on YouTube. Either way, I'll get it. And you can also give me a voicemail, one 763 So... Let's um, let's talk a little bit about ProPresenter. ProPresenter is one of my favorite pieces of software. I verified what I was feeling when I was playing with it by talking to the uh, one of their salespeople back a couple of years ago. I said, "Look, ProPresenter really feels like it was." written by someone who did this in the church, saw the shortcomings, and happened to be able to write software, so this person wrote some software to fix all the problems that I've seen in worship software. And the salesman looked at me confused and said, yeah, that's exactly how ProPresenter 1 came to be. He wanted, he wanted something that just worked better. And you can tell, you can tell that that's what's going on because of just all the things. So here's a nifty little feature that I discovered actually today in response to a question that someone asked over on the church tech group uh, on Google+. Plus. So here, let me bring that up. So uh, Bill Almack says, I probably need to download the demo and play around with it, but one thing I've noticed in many videos is they only have... Here, let me click read more. A few... Uh, motion backgrounds. I have a lot of them. With only one row visible down at the bottom, that looks like it would be hard to manage a huge library. Well, uh, Edgar Beltran al already wrote back and said that uh, that's not a problem, and I agree. Um, so let me show you why that's not a problem. I'm zoomed in pretty far here because I'm live streaming this at 640 by 360, which is much lower resolution than you have. But this is the bottom of your ProPresenter 5 window. You see down here? And you'll notice you've got backgrounds, foregrounds, purchased, and I've got these two things here, these two folders. So that's one tip, but we'll get to that in a minute because the the first thing is if you're just concerned that you only have one row, right here there's a little dot. I don't know if you can see that. It's right where my mouse is. When I pre-record these, I can uh, do it in um, Camtasia, and it highlights my mouse. But right here, uh, kind of towards the middle, right 
third of your screen, there's a little dot. Now watch what happens when I place my mouse over the dot. It turns into this little doodad, which looks like a bar with an arrow up and an arrow down. So what that means is I can stretch this. So if you just want more rows of these things, no problem. I mean, if, um, and if just having, if you just want to play with the size of them, you can do that here. So they can be very big or they can be very small. So that, that could help too. So I've stretched this bar uh, to what was three rows initially, and now I've got, uh, you can't see all of them, but I've got, let's see here. Bring this over here. Okay, I've got uh, seven thumbnails for each of the backgrounds on each row. So I could very easily get 21 viewable uh, video files here and that that is one thing to help you I can also change this to a list view instead if you think that that's a better way to do it uh, of course you'll see that that's only uh, one per line but if you just you have them well organized by title maybe that's a better way to do it for you but I really prefer the thumbnail so I'm going to go back to that now you might be thinking, um, well, Paul, that's all fine and good, but I'd really prefer to organize them even more. Maybe you put still backgrounds in one place, maybe you do bokeh stuff, maybe um, 3D stuff, maybe by color. You know, just organize it in a different way. No problem. I've got you covered here. So... I say I, like I had anything to do with this great piece of software. I didn't. But, so what you would do is, you see down here in this lower left-hand corner on the screen, there's a little gear with the little down thing. I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice we've got a new hot folder. Maybe we'll talk about that uh, another time. New playlist, maybe we'll talk about that another time. But right now, new group folder. So what I can do is I can make a group. So I can do, this one could be entitled slides or stills, and then I could have this week. Um, I'm going to call this uh, abstract. And let me call this one see here. Boca. So if it's more of a Boca kind of background you can put it in there. Now the way that you organize these is once you've created these you choose the appropriate folder and then you just hit this little plus down here. So Make sure you choose the appropriate folder first. Um, let me show you this beforehand, because I'm going to try and navigate to a video I haven't, I don't remember where I put this, so it may not be actually there. But I've got my other hard drive connected, so I should be able to find one. Okay, anyway. So you'll notice that I don't have any videos that have any people in them. So I'm going to add one of those, and it's not actually a, um, a bokeh, but let's just pretend that what I'm going to add is, so I click plus here, and then the open dialog actually showed up on my other screen, but you can see my open dialog. Let's check. It seems like I might have something in the downloads folder. I click desktop. I shouldn't have. So if I go to downloads, let's see here. Okay, 
here is in the downloads folder this is one of my past shows and so it's got me against a white screen so that's pretty starkly different so I'm gonna click open and here in just a second it says preparing above the screen where you can't see it and it's importing one of one okay so it does that and so that's in the Boca folder now you might say well what if I can't remember where it is well, no problem. You could go to here, and you'll see that it added it in here as well. So, when you add it to a subfolder, it also adds it to the main backgrounds folder, and you need to think of backgrounds as just every background you have, and all these little folders as places where you can organize your backgrounds. Now, I haven't found anything to do with foregrounds, but I would think that there aren't going to be a lot of foreground videos that you're going to use week in and week out, or even really on that much of a regular basis. Uh, maybe if you show music videos before the service or something, maybe there are two or three or maybe you have a playlist of 30, but still that should be fairly uh, simple to organize. So I don't think that that's necessarily a big deal, but as I say, now you'll notice here, I already put in these still backgrounds for this week in the this week folder, and I can, so if this was actually a bokeh instead of a video of me, then we'd have bokeh right there, and then this week slides right here, and then I can quickly and easily go between those. And I could also have like a, an archive folder and stuff like that. So those are just a couple of things that are really helpful about ProPresenter 5. As I say, the programmers there, because now they've expanded, it's not just one person, the programmers there really know what they're doing and they really look out for just all the stuff that we need in church media. Uh, before I let you go, I really ought to also show you this, because you can sort these by different categories. So sort by index, sort by type. So if you know that all the stuff that you make are MP4s and all the stuff you buy are MOVs, that could actually help you. Sort by name, alphabetical. Uh, sort by path, where is it located. Sort by kind. I think kind and type are about the same thing, but I could be wrong. Duration, how long is it? So if you know that all your uh, all your abstract backgrounds tend to be 30 seconds or less, you could sort by that. Format, original length, because you can trim videos in ProPresenter 5, you can sort by the original length and manufacture where they came from. So if, again, if you purchased a lot of them. So that's very helpful and also this search function. So let's say I wanted to find one with Easter in the title. So you'll notice just typing that, that brings it back to these two. So if I remember the name of the video, or the background rather, but I don't remember where it is, so let's say uh, here, I remember that it was uh, I-N-T-L. Well, see there, it shows up. All these have that in the name. So that really whittles it down, and it's very quick. So that's great as well. So I, I hope that that helps. I hope that um, as you're going through... ProPresenter 5 that you find that it really just does have the features. And I'm not paid by them, 
to do these videos. I just love the product. So go ahead, uh, leave a comment down below, or uh, subscribe to the show if you're on YouTube. There's a little subscribe button. That helps me out because you'll get notifications of when there are new shows, which this show is recorded weekly. Um, at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. UTC during the summertime, and 4 during the winter, because of the annoying time change thing. And just hope that it helps. Until next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.